Hi, I'm Allison from Boomerang Pilates and Move Smart Movement. And today we're going to talk about the difference between isolation and integration. And they're two really important components of the way I approach teaching movement. <coughs> Excuse me. Isolation would be where we're really looking at individuating, typically for me it's a joint, that we're isolating the movement of one bone relative to another bone or bones with all of the associated musculature that's creating that movement and looking at how we can limit the other body parts from moving. This is not how we move around in the world, but because we tend to under move and we tend to over sit in one position, um, it can be really difficult to, to actually isolate and therefore feed the muscles and the, the brain connection and patterns that go with isolating a particular joint and the movements associated with it. So here, I'm trying to isolate my humerus, my arm bone in external rotation without moving my shoulder blade, without moving my chest or my spine or my ribs. And integration would be where that joint is moving in conjunction with other related associated neighboring parts. Integration provides you with a bigger overall range of motion and the misnomer is that it's providing a bigger range of motion for a precise joint, which is not the case. So if this is as far as I can go in my external rotation, then adding my shoulder blade seems to take, it takes my arm further in space, but it hasn't increased the movement in my actual shoulder joint, right? If I add my spine and my ribs, I haven't increased the movement at my joint, I've just added more motion. So it's important to do both. Integrated movement is more of what we do in our everyday lives, and your integrated movement will be better if you work on the isolation so that each individual part of your integrated team has more range and more strength and more control and you are more connected in terms of your, your body movement patterns um, to all the individual components that create the whole thing. So now let's take a look at what that looks like in motion. So isolation will mean I'm not moving my chest or my shoulders or my spine, I'm only moving my arm in the shoulder socket. And that's about as far as I can go before I start moving other parts. I'm not warmed up, this is kind of my, my real range. But if I integrate the movement of my arm and my shoulder blade, I get that. And then if I add my ribs and my spine, I get that. This isn't really changing what's happening in my shoulder, it's just adding more layers. Arm, as far as it can go. Arm and shoulder blade. Adding actual rotation through my spine and my chest. So what's different is that isolation requires my torso to be stable and my arm, my shoulder joint itself to be mobile. Um, not necessarily flexible, but mobile, right? Adequately supported with strength as well as uh, motion as mobility. Once I start to integrate things, I'm now using my core both to move me and to stabilize me. And I'm asking all of my parts to talk to each other. And this is an important thing to teach to our clients as teachers. It's an important thing for us to try and think about as movers. What is the why of a particular movement? Is the goal to have all of the parts talking to each other to be an integration movement? Or is the goal to limit the range of motion and be more precise about what is moving and what is not? And that would be an isolation exercise. I know lots of people don't love isolation exercises. They feel it's limiting and it might make them uncomfortable or it causes, um, makes them feel like something's painful. And my suggestion to that would be 
it's not about don't do isolation exercises, don't do, don't not do that kind of alignment work, but explore moving less. It probably means that the range of motion in that particular joint needs to be accommodated and that you can do that, but you, you do it a little bit less and you build up your range gradually over time. And that doing these kinds of exercises is actually incredibly valuable and important for a healthy, well-moving body that can maintain its strength and mobility lifelong. So that's the why, and this is a great way to play with different kinds of movement and different approaches to the same movement modalities. So if you're interested in this kind of stuff, get in touch with me, send me a message, uh, leave me a comment. The teacher training that's coming up in April will be covering all of this stuff in great detail. Bye.